After realizing the scale of the Chernobyl disaster, it became clear that the consequences will take many decades for mankind to deal with. Scientists have never before encountered such a technogenic release of radionuclides. Watch this video to the end and you will learn about all the plans of the government, and we will also summarize what awaits the Chernobyl exclusion zone in the future. In the 70s of the last century there was a boom in nuclear power. Nuclear power was recognized as one of the safest and most promising, and it was extolled and promised a golden age. But in 1986, the accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant demonstrated to the whole world that this gold was no good. The general euphoria faded, but today, more than 30 years later, global interest in the peaceful atom has returned. Despite the enormous efforts of various countries to implement alternative energy projects, nuclear power plants have attracted more and more attention from investors in recent years. Given the current development of technology and ever-increasing energy consumption, most countries simply do not have cheap and efficient competitors to the peaceful atom. However, against the background of a new wave of nuclear boom, the Chernobyl zone, like a black hole on the map of Europe, continues to suck money from Ukraine and other donor countries that help to turn a giant cemetery of radioactive waste and billions buried in the ground into an environmentally safe facility. At the same time, for the donor countries, this spending is not a rescue obligation at all, it is a vital necessity for the whole world. Another question, will the people who will decide the fate of the Chernobyl zone be smart enough? One of the government's plans is to clean up the territories of the Chernobyl zone from residual radiation contamination. There are also plans to eliminate a huge number of radiation dumps that were created during the cleanup of the accident. Now the destroyed power unit of the NPP is covered with a new sarcophagus, the so-called Shelter Object 2. This construction takes most of the radioactive radiation and will serve for a hundred years. And during these next hundred years it is planned to completely dismantle the reactor and recycle all the radioactive elements that are inside Unit 4. The nearby territory, including the city of Pripyat, will remain a closed zone for a very long time, but experts believe that the main territory away from the nuclear power plant can be reclaimed. Land reclamation is a set of works aimed at restoring the productivity and economic value of disturbed lands. In simple words, reclamation is the cleansing of land after chemical or radiation contamination. Reclamation technologies have long been known all over the world, and many times Ukrainian authorities have made statements about their readiness to invest significant funds in the Chernobyl zone to restore agricultural or industrial turnover. For example, in Japan, near the Fukushima station, land decontamination was carried out. This is a very complex and expensive process. To decontaminate one square meter, you have to remove 10 centimeters of soil, which is about 100 kilograms. In the end, tons of radioactive soil was removed, which was first stored somewhere, after which it would go through the process of purification or destruction. The Japanese government at that time estimated the work to clean up the land near Fukushima at $10 billion. Ukraine will not allocate such money for this, so most likely the Ukrainian government will collect money from all countries that are interested in cleaning up these lands. But behind all these big plans there are many problems, about which we will talk further. Very many people are interested in the question, what will happen to the city of Pripyat in the future? A few years ago, the first deputy head of the state agency for exclusion zone management, Dmitry Bobro, said that the city should be dismantled. Officials argue that it is too expensive to leave it as a monument. In order for the buildings to stand for decades more, colossal sums must be invested in their repair. Now the houses in Pripyat are at the mercy of the weather. In winter, water penetrates the village, which freezes and destroys the concrete foundations. If buildings begin to collapse, radioactive dust, given the winds, can reach the area where people work and live. For example, a serving house will raise a pillar of radioactive dust that the wind will carry anywhere. A radioactive cloud can be formed, which with a northerly wind will reach Kiev, and when the wind moves south, Belarus, for example, Gomel. The concentration of radionuclides could be such that some areas would even have to be evacuated. There was even such a version, to fall the city by directed explosions and rebury it, but it is impossible to dismantle the building by this method, as a lot of radioactive dust will rise, as well as an independent collapse of the building. To prevent such a development, experts believe that the best option is to start construction dismantling, that is, disassembly with the help of special equipment. 
In their opinion, this process will be more manageable and safer than leaving the houses as they are and waiting for them to collapse on their own. If Pripyat begins to be worn down, tourism, which has been gaining momentum recently, will suffer first of all. In 2007, the computer game Stalker was released, which significantly increased the number of tourists to the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, and Forbes magazine in 2009 named the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone the most exotic place for tourism on Earth. Even foreigners started sneaking in illegally. They stocked up on special tools to overcome the fence surrounding Pripyat and thus bypass the checkpoint. In 2014, Russia released the TV series Chernobyl. Exclusion Zone, which once again promoted the development of tourism in the area. Now the ghost town is probably the main attraction of the Chernobyl Zone, and if this town will be gone, there will be no tourists. But it should be recognized that if Pripyat is not demolished in the next 20 years, the city itself will sink into ruins. Therefore, if for some reason you have not been there yet, but you really want to visit this place, while there is an opportunity to see everything with your own eyes and immerse yourself in the era of radioactive apocalypse. Despite the fact that the emergency reactor has been covered with a protective arch on top, it still poses a threat. The old sarcophagus erected over the destroyed Unit 4 immediately after the accident was essentially a giant concrete box. It was built in a hurry, it took only 200 days to construct the structure from 400,000 cubic meters of concrete mix and 7,000 tons of metal. Nevertheless, for more than 30 years it contained the radiation that was destroying it from the inside. It wasn't long before the destruction of the old sarcophagus became apparent, in 2013, the hinged roof slabs of the engine room roof of Unit 4 collapsed. The natural problems have been fixed, but you may have heard that the old sarcophagus, erected in heroic haste, is not airtight. About 180 tons of fuel remained inside the destroyed reactor, turned into solidified masses containing fuel elements. As a result, radiation levels inside today reach thousands of Rentkins. The airtightness of the structure has always left much to be desired, the total area of gaps in the roof and walls at the time of its commissioning was thousands of square meters. After stabilization of the building structures and roof repairs in 2008, the situation improved, but not dramatically. The safe lifetime of the newly erected metal structures of the shelter facility is 30 years, i.e. it has long since expired. In addition, in 2013, Chernobyl was under the threat of flooding, in mid-April, the water level in the Pripyat River rose sharply. It turns out that as long as the emergency fourth unit will be there, there is always a risk of any non-standard situations. To prevent all the risks associated with the emergency reactor, it has to be dismantled in stages. Partly because of this, a huge protective arch has been erected over Unit 4, but the disassembly is not all that easy either. First, there are a lot of unstable structures there that, if they collapse, could raise radioactive dust into the air. Secondly, there are no technical developments yet on how to remove the contents of Unit 4. The building structures can be dismantled somehow, but what to do with the fuel containing masses? How to saw these wastes? People can't work there even in a hundred years. Radiation background inside will not practically decrease, there is plutonium, uranium-235 and neutron-emitting radionuclides with half-life of more than 2,000 years. During the liquidation of the accident, robots were used in the most contaminated areas, but Swedish and Japanese robots failed, in the radioactive field, the batteries failed and the electrics burned. Moreover, the fourth power unit is not a flat site, there are a lot of rooms inside with thick doors 15 centimeters thick, everything can be tightly closed, and it is unclear how to get in there. In addition to the large amount of fuel inside, there is a lot of other waste, for example, about one and a half thousand tons of graphite, and what originally melted during the accident has already fossilized. There are also a lot of pipelines and equipment, and all of it is radioactive, just like the old sarcophagus itself. It will take a very long time, perhaps a hundred years or more, to clean the area through. It is not known when everything will be over. International experts believe that Ukraine needs to solve the issue of transforming the Chernobyl site and financing this project at the international level. Otherwise, the zone will remain a radioactive burial ground for centuries to come. And the green lawn in this beautiful neighborhood will be seen only in dreams. Even our great-grandchildren, summarizing, can say that in a hundred years the Chernobyl exclusion zone can become an ecologically clean and safe area, where these terrible signs of emergency danger, 
fences and checkpoints will disappear forever. Perhaps the city of Pripyat will be revived again, and relatives of those who lived in Pripyat before the accident will move there. But stop, what revival, what people? How could we forget that at the industrial site near the Chernobyl NPP they are launching a radioactive waste repository designed for a hundred years? What will happen to the waste in a hundred years? Will they be destroyed too, or will they stay there forever? And what kind of waste will be there? How can we even talk about revitalization plans and green lawns when such a question remains open? We will try to answer these questions in one of the episodes if you support this video with your likes and comments.